say good morning now because it's morning. Yes, we, we are past midnight. That's right. Um, my name is Pastor Jason Baldwin, and I serve your brothers and sisters in Christ at Hope Lutheran Church in St. Charles, not too far from here in Saginaw, about 25 minutes away. And it's my pleasure to be with, here, you, with you here tonight. Um, I would like to share with you some familiar words that we're going to base our devotion on this evening. They're from 2 Corinthians, the last verse of the book. It's th chapter 13, verse 14. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Where have you heard those words before? Where have you heard those words? Go ahead, somebody answer. Yeah, there you go. In a, in a prayer? Yeah. Close. Yeah. Yeah. Usually the pastor looks like this, right? When he says those words. Pretty familiar, right? We hear them a lot. And so familiar are those words that we could just kind of gloss over them. Okay, he's through the announcements and then we're done. You know, or not for oh, the sermon ran a little long today, or you're just thinking about what's next. It's one of those things that maybe are so familiar to us, like the Lord's Prayer or dinner prayer or something like that, that we don't often ponder what those words mean. Those words are really beautiful. It wasn't just the Apostle Paul saying goodbye. The Holy Spirit inspired him to write those words as the last thing he would say at the end of that letter. And those words are really important to you and me because it's a reminder for us about the most important things in our lives. It's what your life is built on. It's what every Christian home and marriage and friendship is built on. It's what every congregation is built on and surely what Michigan Lutheran Seminary is built upon. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And we need these gifts given to us. And they are gifts because we can't get them from anywhere else. God has to give them to us. And that first blessing that is mentioned there is grace. We use that word in a lot of different ways, like if we say, wow, she, she dances with grace. Or, that person's got style and grace. It depends on the context, how you're using that. Does anybody know, maybe some of you are in catechism right now, and you've learned what the definition of that word is. What does grace mean? Anybody know? Yeah. Undeserved love. That's a great definition. It is undeserved love. It's God's love that he has for us that is unforced and it's undeserving by us. He loves us because of who he is in spite of who we are. It's the love that is a choice. God chooses to love us and chooses to enter into a relationship with us. And you and I need grace. We all do. If you could talk to the people who know me the best, my children, my wife, my parents, if you could talk to some of the professors and tutors from when I was here at MLS, you would know how much I need God's grace. And if I asked the people who know you best in your life, they would tell me, oh yeah, he needs grace, she needs grace because of how often we sin. We're born into it, and we rebel against God day after day after day. We do the things He doesn't want us to do, and then we don't do the things that He does want us to do. And we know that it's a daily struggle. And some of those struggles that we have with sin are ones that other people know about, and sometimes those struggles are ones that only we and God know about. But for all that sin, we know we need God's grace. And if God was going to give us the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, then he had to show his love in another way. 
So the Father chose to love us by sending us His Son into the world. You know about that love. How many of you know John 3.16? Think we can say it together? For God so loved the world that He gave His only, only Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. I heard some NIV and some EHV in there. I went back and forth a little bit. That's a precious passage, isn't it? Because it shows us how the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is directly connected to the love that God had for us, that He would send Jesus into this world to do what we could not do, to do all the things that His Father in Heaven wanted Him to do, and to do none of the things that His Father in Heaven didn't want Him to do, to earn us that grace that we live in every single day. And after living that perfect life, we know we've just celebrated it a few weeks ago. He walked that road to the cross to pay for all of our sins and then the glorious message of He is risen on Easter morning. Still, it rings in our ears. That's the love that God has for us. And then that's also connected to the other blessing that the Apostle Paul speaks of here. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. God has brought us into fellowship, into this relationship and this union with Him that didn't exist. If it wasn't for His grace and love, we would have remained outside of His family. We would have made, remained blind, dead enemies of God that wanted nothing to do with Him, and we would have been doomed to eternal death and hell. But because God loved us in His grace... He brought us into that relationship when He brought us to faith. For a lot of you, maybe most of you, that was at your baptism. Maybe some of you learned about Jesus and the Holy Spirit worked through that message and then you were baptized later. But at your baptism, the Lord put that name on you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And every time the pastor stands up and says those words, it's a reminder and it takes you back to your baptism. That you're a baptized child of God. And your baptism is something that has a daily impact on you. Instead of saying you were baptized, it's good to sometimes say, I am baptized. Because you live in that grace and that love of your baptism. And now your relationship with God is that you are royal heirs. You are brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And so your Father is His Father in heaven. That's the relationship that the power of the Holy Spirit has brought into your life and into your hearts. But you know what? He's also brought you into another relationship and another fellowship. And that's with one another. You know what's really cool when you look around this room? A lot of different people, different ages, come from different places, different schools, different families. But we are all united in one family. We believe the same thing. We confess the same Savior. We have been united not by blood in this world, the blood relatives we usually talk about, like our cousins or our brothers and sisters, but we're made brothers and sisters by the blood of Jesus Christ. We stand united in faith. That is so cool. First time I came to MLS, I was in eighth grade. It was February of my eighth grade year. And I went to a school, I went to Mayville Community Schools, not too far from here, about an hour away. And um, I didn't know anything about MLS. And I came here with a buddy of mine, and I was just amazed. I was blown away. I saw all these other kids that were my age that believed the same thing. In my public school that I went to, I knew one other kid that believed the same thing as me. He's the one who brought me here. And I saw this school and I thought, I got, I got to go here. I, I want more of this. I want to be around this. And maybe some of you go to Lutheran schools where you're surrounded with that fellowship every day and you get to enjoy it. That's precious. Don't take it for granted. It's a wonderful blessing to be surrounded by people you're in fellowship with. It's a wonderful blessing that's part of that school. And as this fellowship of believers, God has given us the wonderful privilege of sharing His Word. I have no doubt that God is going to use you in your life to share His Word with others. All of you. 
And you might think to yourself, well, I, I don't think I'm going to be a pastor. I don't think I'm going to be a teacher. Doesn't matter. God's still going to use you wherever you are to tell other people about the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Because you'll never meet somebody that doesn't need to hear it. And you'll never meet somebody that already knows about it that doesn't need to be reminded about it. And God's going to put you in all kinds of situations and have all kinds of people come across your path in your life where you have this thing, the most important thing, to share with them. And He's going to use you to do that. Some of you, He's going to use as pastors and teachers to replace guys like me sharing that full time. And that's one of the blessings of MLS is you get to consider that when you come here. And think about, hmm, maybe I could do that. It's amazing the grace that God has for us in Jesus. The love that He's shown us in sending Him to us and the fellowship that He's brought us to with Him and with one another. May God strengthen and keep us in the grace of our baptism. May He continue to show us that love that He's had for us as we open up the pages of His Scripture. And may He strengthen our bonds of fellowship with Him and with one another. Amen. Let's sing Him 745. So this is in the Blue Supplement book. 745. And we'll sing the whole thing, please. going to use Luther's evening prayer right now. If you don't know this, if you flip to page 69 in the front of this blue supplement, you'll find Luther's evening prayer there. Page 69. We pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. Forgive me all my sins and graciously keep me this night. Into your hands I commend my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ 
and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Now, we get to our hymn sing portion of our evening here. So, I would like to give you opportunities to pick the hymns that we're going to sing. We won't sing the whole hymn. We'll sing a verse or two of some different hymns. And we might not get through all the, the suggestions that you have, but who's got one for us? Right there. 787? All right, 787. So that's in the blue supplement. 787. This one, this one got the axe. I got the signal. Um, only, only because if, if one's too tricky to play or something like that, we'll move on to the next one. Okay, so who's got another one? Sorry about that. 440, so that's in the red hymnal. 440. On Eagle's Wings. Let's sing verse 1 of On Eagle's Wings. 440 verse 1. This section, we got somebody here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 
4.11 verse 3. Very specific. I like it. So 4.11, what a friend we have in Jesus. Verse 3. 4.11 verse 3. Here, back on the, the wall, all the way back. Yes? Uh, 379. 379? Okay. 379. Amazing Grace. Let's do one and two of Amazing Grace. 379. One and two. Yes, sir. 131. 131. All glory, laud, and honor. Let's do verse 1 of 131. shirt. I saw your hand up first. <coughs> Onward Christian Soldiers. What number is that? 537. 537. Nice. That was some impressive encyclopedic knowledge there. 537. Let's sing verse 1 of 537. Onward Christian Soldiers.
Yes, ma'am. 293. Oh, we're saving that one for the end. So we'll come back to that and circle around. Yes, Miss Addy. 593. Oh, this is a good nighttime hymn. 593, which is now the light has gone away. Let's do verses 1 and 5 of 593. So we're in the supplement, 742. <laughs> 742, what is this bread? Uh, let's sing verse 1 of this, 742. Seven seven one. Seven seven one. I want to walk as a child of the light. Good one. Let's do verse one of this and the refrain. Seven seven one. children with my blessing. Let's do verse 1 of this. 332.
one? 728. 728, Jerusalem the Golden. Let's do verse 1 of that. Seven thirty five. Oh, good one. Speak, O Lord. Seven thirty five. Let's sing verse one of seven thirty five. sing beautifully. It's wonderful to hear you do that. As we close, if I could still have your attention for one minute, could I have all of the MLS students please stand?
ones helping out at the lock-in someday. You could be the ones being here. And let me tell you, the blessings of MLS changed the entire course of my life. I cannot tell you how many blessings I have in my life because God brought me to this school and all of the men and women who shared God's word with me here and all of the lifelong friends that I've made, this could be you. And if you have questions about the school, don't hesitate to ask one of these guys, what's it like? They'll tell you. Um, I would like us, first, stay standing, please. Um, we'd like to close with God's word, our great heritage. If we could just sit back and listen to you MLS students sing it, it would warm my heart. All right. If, if everybody, let, let's quiet down and let's let, let's let these MLS students sing our school hymn. singing for us MLS students. Thank all of you for singing as we worship and praise our God. Let's give a round of applause to Drew Lutzo because he did an amazing job. I know you don't. It's a sign. You're good. I know you don't normally applaud pastors, but uh, let's thank Pastor Baldwin for being here at midnight. All right, just the last couple of notes here. So, first of all, thanks very much for being respectful so far. Please continue that into the morning hours as well, both respectful to each other and to the place that you're at. Um, one of the big things that happens after this, as far as respect goes, is respecting the people that need a little break uh, in the sleeping area. So we are gonna turn the hallway lights off in there. If you need to go grab something from your room, please do so quietly. There may be someone who is trying to get some rest. Uh, and Keep having fun, but just have fun in the gym and in the commons and in the video game room and the movie room and Nine Square and all that area. Don't, don't have fun there. Go to sleep there, okay? Another couple of notes that I failed to mention earlier. The first is this. If you grab snacks or something to drink, uh, please eat or drink whatever you are eating or drinking in the commons. Don't take it with you into the gym. Don't take it with you to the video game room. Uh, because spills happen, they do. I know no one's trying, like dumping out all of their stuff everywhere. Um, but they happen. 
and it just helps us clean up a little bit more. So please eat and drink in the commons area. Uh, and then finally, the outside games are done with the exception of nine square. So you are truly locked in now. You should not be leaving the building unless you are playing nine square at the end of the trophy case hallway. All right, the time is 12.45, which means it is time for some ice cream. You will be dismissed by section. Ice cream is gonna happen. Ice cream is gonna happen in the commons where the pizza was. So, which section should go first? Huh. 